In this video, I am going to give you an overview of how some freshly installed awesome enterprise looks and some of the important terms used in awesome enterprise during construction. So this is a fresh installation of uh, WordPress with the awesome enterprise plugin and we have set up two apps, plot and error log. Now let's see. Uh, in awesome enterprise, the most important section is this. Uh, when we are initially starting app and tool, uh, these are the some of the modules that we import as the initial setup XML file, and this gives you a block content layout. A default header and footer less variables are being registered and some of the basic services and a script module so this is how it looks so the uh, out of box fresh installation with wordpress will look like this it's completely blank only a post section that works and nothing else this is the initial default setup. Now let's see. So, what is Awesome Enterprise? Awesome Enterprise is a low code, short code based framework for WordPress and it and it works best alongside the monomyth theme, monomyth enterprise theme that we have. Now let's see. Uh, next important term is, of course, the awesome code. Awesome code is, as I've shown you, this section. This is basically set of modules that are used during the execution of your request to provide the default behavior. Specifically, in case of themes, it is header, footer, and sometimes registration of CPTs, services, less variables, settings and using in it any code that you want to run. So module is our most uh, basic code unit. For example, this header is a module. In a module, you can write HTML code, short codes, CSS within the short code, and even scripts. So this is a very basic unit within an awesome enterprise. It's called a module. We also have within a module, we also have something called as templates. Templates are like functions within a module. So, apart from module, we also have template. It is equivalent to basically a function within a module. Uh, for example, I have opened DB service. And you can see this, these are the templates within the module. Uh, by default, we have uh, uh, everything is considered as part of the main, main template. So, template.add main. You can explicitly uh, specify it. If that template exists and you call a module, by default, templates.main is executed. Okay. So, as you can see, uh, while in header we have not written template.main, this can be considered as part of template.main. But if you write something outside of the template, 
when a module is executed everything is executed within the module and then templates are added to the system so basically modules and templates are uh, uh, the building block of uh, or the basic unit of a awesome app or awesome enterprise where we write code so the code is written in a module and it could be encapsulated within a template if it needs to be called multiple times within a module the next uh, next important thing is awesome app which is nothing but a logical wrappers for workflows within an app every module is private so let's see some of the apps that we have here these are the apps and uh, you get following options to create an app config collection module collection pages collection similarly uh, these are the list of all the apps that we have currently of this we have code in this package now uh, site site skin is app is responsible for basically site wide uh, css and awesome css is the one we use so i'll just show you this is how we use it css.minify and all the collections within the app included to give us a single url so let's see here so as you can see this is the css file site skin css awesome css and it includes all these so this is our way of you know we to combine all the css in a single css while you can have the individual modules to edit when used inside a project ideally site specific is where you should be writing your own css code which has to be available globally within the or within the application let's talk about root app so when uh, whenever you need to call an module within a page whenever you need to call a module within a page you need to use the root app let's create one module Okay. Put it in the sample. So you can try to make it. So show show you how we use uh, templates in page. You can only use root app modules within a page, main WordPress page, or you can create your own uh, or you can use your own app. Let's publish it. Let me see if I can publish. So it's saved. Let's see. So this is the output. So this is how you call 
modules in your pages. Now let's look at another app, Awesome JS app. Now this app is responsible for all our JS and gives us a single JS file. If you see, this is how we have included jQuery, Swiper, and Flat Picker within a single JS file. And of course, this piece of code is our own to include our Spa V2 JS file. And if you look here again, so here's the basically our JS file. Okay, that's how it's included. Let me show you where this file is included. So it's included in the awesome code scripts. So this is how you can include the CSS. Look at the awesome CSS being included. And the JS. Right? So this is the scripts module in the code that includes the JS file. And we prefer, you know, to include all these modules by default. You can include and write other JS code. Like for example, this is swiper.js that we have included. And then this is uh, merged and included into the Final output. Now let's talk about something else. Uh, services. Now services form another critical component of awesome enterprise. Uh, services are something that are used to you know write logic or code which can be shared between multiple apps within a project as well as they are reusable, reusable, so it can be used in other projects. I mean, if I've written correctly, that. So I had already shown you this BB service, right? We have a bunch of such services. For example, we have form control service that allows us to, you know, create form elements and forms quickly. Uh, some of the some services that you can expect out of box uh, DB service, search service, form control service, notification service. Notification service is interesting in that it allows you to send emails and uh, create a log within the DB. So this is notification service. So basically services is where we like code, code that needs to be used into multiple apps within a project and services is something that are reusable across so you can use you will find notification service in almost all our projects or the db service or the search service right backend design service so content types are like similar to objects right you can assume contact type similar to objects in this, they are like, you know, they are self-contained, they have workflows, queries, views, everything together to represent an object and create a reusable behavior of an object in the project and very specific to project. While services are, you know, generic and can be used across projects. Of course, we can have generic content types, but we don't currently have too many generic content. Now, one last thing that I want to show you is meta table. So I told you about DB service. DB service understands this structure of table. Once you have a table like this, and we call this a meta table, our DB service works with this. Here is an example of the meta table. For example, saving the leads. We have ID stamp updated by object ID. Meta key, meta value. And some indexes of course. So this is our meta table. This is the table name does, doesn't have to be this. Table name can be anything. 
but the column names have to be the same. If column names match, we call it our meta table. This is an example of meta table and how we store data in the meta table. So if you look at this, this is a base lead info and then various comments applied on that lead by users. So this is what our default meta table looks like and this is how we store the data. And within awesome enterprise, this meta table structure is very typical and is used extensively. So just to review, an awesome enterprise is consists of apps. An app consists of modules. Modules may have templates. Apart from that, we have services and content types. Services are usable components uh, across projects, while content types generally are very specific to the project. When we create any module in the code, is generally get cached, and any changes that you make into the code, you have to purge the global cache from here. You, uh, you have to purge the global cache to make sure it gets reflected because we heavily cache the code. We also cache apps. If you make any changes to the list of apps, you have to purge this global cache for apps to reflect. Services registering a new services, registering an app, registering a, or modifying a new module in the code. All these requests go uh, for purging of Google cache because of the way we cached. Sidespin and AwesomeJS are our backbone apps for maintaining the site-wide CSS and JS, while root app is the app in which you create modules that needs to be used within a WordPress page. Plot app, error log app, settings app that you are looking are the blank structures made ready for you to import these apps, the XML file of these apps and have it ready. It's that's why currently when you default setup, plot app is blank, other app is blank. In samples app, you will find code demos and samples of using various services. Mood board is one such service give a uh, created module created to give you the example of how your site skin has been set up and it gives you a list of all the classes. So this is the example of how mood board and your site skin applied to mood board looks like. Various classes, buttons, font sizes, these are all the classes that it directly can use. So that's samples. Add for you. So, this is the default uh, and overview of an awesome enterprise setup.